Are you looking to rent a car but find it challenging because of the language barriers? Look no further. Hi, I'm Sharon and welcome to another Look and Listen English Lessons podcast. In this step-by-step guide, I will walk you through the process of renting a car in English, from booking online to picking up the car at the rental agency. We've got you covered. So say goodbye to confusion and hello to a stress-free car rental experience. So whether you're traveling abroad or just need a car for a weekend getaway, this podcast video is perfect for anyone looking to navigate the car rental process in English. Don't let the language barriers hold you back and learn how to rent a car with ease. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more helpful tips and tricks and I will appreciate your likes and comments. So, are you ready? Let's get started. <laughs> Finding a rental car The best way to get the car you need at a price you can afford is to plan ahead and book in advance before you travel if you can. This gives you plenty of time to compare different car hire companies, read and understand the conditions of hire and consider the cost and value of any additional charges. You need to consider pickup locations where you'd like to collect your rental car for your journey. You'll find many car hire desks at the airport which are very convenient but often cost more. There's a good chance that the cost of hire will be lower if you book in advance online before you collect the car. To save even more, you might want to consider picking up your rental car. You can also say hire car from an out of town location or a city center location rather than the airport where this might not be as practical an option for those traveling as a group or with lots of luggage car hire companies often charge you less money to pick up hire cars from these locations one more thing to consider is the car hire company's list of drop off locations these are places where you can return the car when you've finished your journey when you do drop off the car it will be checked over for any signs of damage bumps scraps dents and so on that you may be charged a fee for next make sure you have all the necessary documents you'll need a valid driver's license a credit card for payment and sometimes an additional id once you've selected a rental company and gathered your documents it's time to make a reservation you can do this online or over the phone. Be sure to specify the dates, times and any extras you may need like GPS or car seat. When you arrive to pick up your rental car, inspect it for any damages before driving off. Ask questions. Take note of any dents or scratches to avoid being charged for pre-existing damage. Hi there listeners, let's go through the essential questions and phrases that you as a customer can use. I would like to rent a car. I'm hoping to rent a mid-sized van. Can I get a car with an automatic transmission? I need a car for two weeks. Is it possible to extend the contract if necessary? How much does the rental cost per day? Does the price include insurance? How long is the minimum rental period? I would like to add an additional driver to the contract. Where can the car be returned? What kind of car would you like to hire? This all depends on how many of you are traveling, the level of comfort you are seeking, how much luggage you are carrying, and the nature of your trip. Here are some of the popular car classification that you'll find available. Hatchback. These are small cars, typically with two doors. They're ideal for city breaks where roads are narrower and parking spaces are more limited. They will use less petrol too, so are the cheaper option for single people and couples. Saloon or sedan. 
These are larger cars designed to sit five adults comfortably and they also come with a boot. If you're in the UK or Europe, so a trunk, this is what they call a boot in the US. So pay attention, if you're in the UK and Europe, you're far more likely to see the term saloon being used, whereas sedan is the more popular term in the US, Canada, Australia and New Zealand. A state car. Also known as a station wagon, these are much like saloon cars but are elongated at the rear, creating far more boot space and sometimes extra seats in the back. This makes them ideal for those traveling with lots of luggage, camping equipment or with additional passengers. Sports cars. These cars are small, low and fast, think Ferrari and Porsche. They will typically cost more to hire and will hold very little luggage. MPV This stands for multi-purpose vehicle and is also known as a people carrier because this type of car can hold lots of people like a taller state car. An MPV can usually hold around 8 passengers so there's lots of room for luggage too. SUV this stands for sports utility vehicle and is the name given to large cars designed to be driven off-road. That is, they are good for driving outside the cities and motorways and on dirt roads or sands and on country roads. They are sometimes called four-wheel drive cars or four-on-fours, which means that all four wheels of the car move when it is stirred, not just the front two wheels. So land Rovers and Jeeps are popular SUVs and they can usually hold a lot of luggage and five adults comfortably. Convertible if you're traveling somewhere warm, you might want to opt for a convertible, also known as a soft top. This type of car has a root that folds down, allowing you to soak up the sun and enjoy a cool breeze as you drive. Minibus. If you're looking for a vehicle that can accommodate even more passengers, perhaps you're traveling with a large group of friends or colleagues, then a minibus will do the job. This is the name given to vehicles designed to carry more than eight passengers with luggage. It's basically a van with additional seating. And camper van. You might want to save some money on accommodation by renting one of these instead of a regular car. Camper vans have a fold-down bed on board and some have their basic cooking facilities and toilets. Very large camper vans are known as RVs and these have more speciality sleeping arrangements, kitchens and even showers on board. They are a popular way for families to travel on holiday, especially in America. So before hitting the road, adjust the mirror seat and steering wheel to your liking. And lastly, return the car on time to avoid any late fees. Fill up the gas tank before returning it unless you've opted for a prepared fuel option. And that's it. You're now ready to enjoy the freedom of the open road in your rental car. So have fun. Now let's hear Natalie Smith renting a car on her last trip to Los Angeles. Hi, can I help you? Yes, I would like to rent a car. Oh, that's fine. Uh, do you have a reservation? No, that's all right. Let's see what we can find. Uh, well, we have several cars to choose from. What size are you looking for? Well, what are my options? Well, you have a compact car or a mid-sized car and a minivan. Oh, I see. How much are they? Well, the compact is $21.95 a day, the mid-size is $27.95 a day, and the minivan is $35.95 a day. Oh, I see. Well, I'll take the mid-size mid car. Thank you. 
All right, all right. Let me check on the computer. All right. And how long will you be renting the car? Uh, I think um, it will be for uh, one week. Very well. How many people will be driving the car? Uh, I'm afraid just myself. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Let me check. Would you like an insurance, madam? How much is it? Well, it is like uh, $40.95 daily and covers everything regardless of fall. Oh, I see. Yes, please. Can I have your name, madam? Sure. Natalie Smith. All right. And your address, please. Well, I am from the UK. Would you like my address in England? Oh, no. Just a city name, please. London, I'm sure. Yes, it is London. <laughs> Well, can I see your driver's license and credit card, please? Sure, here it is. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Let me check. Mm -mm -mm. That will be $324.92. Would you like me to charge it on this card? Oh, yes, that will be fine. All right, uh, please sign here and you can pick up your car downstairs. Your expected time to return the car is June 29 and that is exactly one week. So show the attendant this invoice, all right? When you return the car, bring this invoice with you. Also, the gas tank is full, so you should fill up the gas tank before you return. And if you don't want to, we can do it for you for three dollars a gallon and is there anything else i can do for you uh no that will be all thank you all right then thank you enjoy yourself goodbye goodbye thank you very much bye bye and that's it for today's lesson let me know in the comments below about your car rental experience okay i would recommend you to check on the complete podcast series here on the link and keep it in your playlist thanks for listening to look and listen english lessons podcast to continue improving your english you are welcome to join my channel and watch the videos on different topics and levels Till next time, bye-bye.